this lecture, uh, we will consider various examples containing LTI inductor and LTI capacitor. The first example is uh, a circuit where we can analyze using initial condition model. Okay, suppose that we have three uh, inductors connected in series and what we want uh, them to have is we want them to have uh, independent initial currents therefore we introduce these switches Therefore, the initial inductor currents and uh, the initial inductor currents can be independent. Now, what happens is the following: at some time and without loss of general activity, we can take that time to be t equals zero. All the switches simultaneously open. Okay. And once all the switches are open, all of a sudden, these three components these three inductors become in serious connection and KCL puts the constraint that all those currents must be the same okay? because there will be just a single loop and in that loop all the currents there's just one current and you know, the currents of the inductors must be the same and the question is what's that current okay what's I1 0 plus or I2 0 plus or I3 0 plus because all those values must be equal to one another. Now let's use initial condition model. Okay, let it be our solution model. We can also approach it uh, from a slightly different way to so use the initial condition model. Use the model where the inductors are without any initial current, and to represent that initial stored energy, we use independent sources. And for this example, it's more suitable to use the independent voltage source as a representation of the initial currents. Okay, so we have plus minus L2 I2 delta T.
And in this loop, all the cards are the same, and let's call that card I of t. Okay. Now we try to figure out what i zero plus is. Now, because the inductors are now without any initial current, okay, it's very easy to combine them. All you have to do is just replace all those three inductors in series connection with a single inductor. And the inductance will be, inductance of that series inductor will be the sum of the individual inductances. Okay. And also, these voltage sources can also uh, be easily combined. They are in serious connection, therefore, they can be replaced by a single independent voltage source whose voltage equals the sum of individual voltages. So with, after that simplification, the circuit becomes equivalent to this very simple topology. This is L1 plus L2 plus L3, the equivalent inductance. And this is IT. And I0 minus is 0, because we have no initial current on the inductors in this model. Okay, all the initial currents are, uh, represent, are, are being represented by the independent voltage sources. And plus minus, we have L1 I1 plus L2 I2 plus L3 I3 delta T volts. And the question is, what's I0 plus? Now I0 minus is zero because we have no initial currents on the inductor. Therefore, we have no initial current on this equivalent inductance inductor. And I0 plus equals I0 minus, which is 0 plus 1 over the inductance times the, uh, the integral of the voltage. So what we have is therefore 1 over L1 plus L2 plus L3, and then we integrate from 0 minus to 0 plus L1 I1 plus L2 I2 plus L3 I3. dt. This is constant, therefore we can take it outside integration. And what remains inside is the integral of impulse from zero, 0 minus to 0 plus. And by definition, that's 1. Therefore, the answer has to be L1i1 plus L2i2 plus L3i3 over L1 plus L2 plus L3. Okay, after the switches are open, this is the current that has to flow through all the inductors. Okay, now there's another way where you don't have to use the initial condition model. We can, no, that initial condition model follows from the terminal equation. Therefore, uh, the root of everything is the terminal equation. Hence, we should be able to solve this problem using the terminal equation. Solution, let's call it solution two. Now, I of t equals, now, I is the current that will be flowing through inductors once the switches are open. Now, I of t equals I1 of t, or I2 of t, or I3 of t, okay, after the switches are open. So, suppose that this is I1 of t. What's I1 of t? I1 of t is I1 0 minus plus 1 over L1. 0 minus t, okay, v1, tau, e tau. Likewise, i2 t equals i2 0 minus plus 1 over l2, then integral of v2 and so on. Therefore, this must hold for all 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, let me make this once case. This should hold for all k. K equals 1, 2, 3. And each time the current must be the same because by KCL, I1, I2, and I3 are the same after the switch. Therefore, 
we can write 0 minus 2t vk tau d tau equals lk it minus lk ik and ik, capital ik is the initial current for the case in that equals one, two, three again. And then if we sum these three equations, what we obtain is for zero minus t, we have three integrals that, that are being summed, and that, that we can write as a single integral, where the integral is v1 tau plus v2 tau plus v3 right hand side equals k equals one three L K I T minus L K I K. Okay now we have to observe the critical thing. And that will give us immediately the answer. And that critical thing is that some of these three voltages, V1 plus V2 plus V3, because they represent the voltages of three inductors which appear on a loop by KBR equals zero. Okay. So this thing equals zero by KBR. So we have integral in this integral is zero, therefore the integral itself is zero. Hence, this thing must equal zero. Then we can write the sum of LKs times I of T equals sum of LK capital I Ks. Okay. Once this is zero, then we can write uh, the zero equals that can be written as this sum times I of T equals sum of LK I Ks. And that implies I of T must equal this sum over this sum. sum of LK IK over sum of LK. So that is the same as what we obtain here. Sum of LK IK divided by sum of LKs. Okay. Okay, 
So let's start from zero minus the first time. Solution t equals zero minus. Okay. Now so the following circuit. Now all we have to realize is what the values are that are taken by the independent sources. Okay. And then with that information, we also know the voltage and current of the capacity and depth, respectively. And then the circuit just becomes an LTI resistive circuit. For that, we have to figure out, and it's easy to figure out all the voltages and currents. Okay. So at this frozen time, t equals 0 minus, we have okay, yl 0 minus is given to be 4 amps. Therefore, we can pretend that. This thing is a 4 amp current source because we're not considering the circuit in an interval. We're considering the circuit at some particular time. Okay. Uh, t equals 0 minus. This is current source. Capacity can be represented by a voltage source. Okay. Then we have our sources here. So this is 2 ohm, this is 3 ohm. And now this represents inductor. The direction is pointing down, that from direction is pointing down. I have 0 minus is 4 amps, so therefore it's a 4 amp current source. This represents the capacitor. Capacitor voltage is minus 4 volts. Well, that is plus minus, therefore here we have minus 4 volts. Now, as for the impulse, this impulse voltage source and uh, step current source. Note that we're considering the time at zero minus. It's a negative time, very close to zero, but still negative. Therefore, the argument of this impulse is negative. When, when that's the case, this is just zero, okay, by definition. And likewise, it's a step. It's argument when its argument is zero. Uh, excuse me, when its argument is negative. By definition, it's zero, therefore eight times zero, this is also zero. Hence, at t equals zero minus, this voltage source provides zero volts, and this current source provides zero amps. A voltage source providing zero volt is the same as short circuit, and a current source that provides zero amps is the same as an open circuit. Okay. Therefore, all we have to do to figure out the current voltages at t equals zero minus is solving this circuit. Okay, so that was that was easy. And now for zero plus. We have to be careful because we have some discontinuous independent source here and also impulsive independent source over there. Because of those sources, we may experience certain jumps or discontinuities at capacitor voltage and inductor current. And we have to figure that out. Okay? And once we know those jumps, once we know the new values, okay, that is IL0 plus and VC0 plus, then we can do the same thing that we did when solving T0 minus. At 0 plus, this is again 0, therefore this will be a short circuit. At 0 plus, this will be a constant source at 8 amps. Okay. And then at 0 plus, this will be some current source, and this can be represented by some voltage source, and then we solve that LTI resistive circuit. Okay, so that's easy. What's, what requires the actual work is figuring out the amount of jump, if there is any, that will be uh, experienced by inductor current and the capacitor voltage. And for that, we have to figure out the impulsive components of the inductor voltage and the capacitor current. Because if only the inductor voltage has an uh, impulsive component and the capacitor current has an impulsive component, those two uh, the inductive 
current and the capacitive voltage will experience some discontinuity at t equals zero plus uh, during at, at t equals zero. So now we want to compute the impulsive components of inductor current and the capacitor voltage. Okay, now this is our circuit. Okay. 
has no contribution to the passive components. Resistors must be 10 delta over 2 plus 3, 5. Okay. 10 delta over 2 plus 3. So that's this car, and we also have this car plus 8 UT. So that yields 2 T plus 8 UT. Okay. So that's IC. S4, VL. Vl t equals its the voltage that appears across the terms of three ohm resistor. Okay. So V three ohm t and that equals what? Now since this is a short circuit, this voltage will be and this is open circuit. This voltage will be distributed over two ohms and three ohms to voltage division. Okay, therefore, uh, of this 10 delta, 6 delta will be appearing across the terms of 3 ohm, and the remaining will be appearing across the terms of 2 ohm resistor. Okay, so we have 3, 3 plus 2 times 10 t equals 6 t volts. Okay, and now, Having figured out IC and VL, we can now compute the zero plus values for inductor current and capacitor voltage. Vc zero plus equals Vc zero minus plus one over C from zero minus to zero plus Ic T dt. That equals Vc zero minus is given to be minus four volts plus one over the capacitance and then from zero minus to zero plus. That's R. Current 2 delta T plus 8 UT ET. Okay, now that this is bounded 8 UT this term, and since the internal of integration is infinitesimally small, it will have no contribution. Okay, that's why we said that we can just easily uh, replace that with an open circuit because it will not. Change the final answer. Final answer being VC0 plus and the values of VC0 plus and IL0 plus. So this term has no effect since it's bound. So we can ignore that. This is impulse, uh, two impulse taking the integral from 0 minus to 0 plus, it gives us 2. 2 times 2, it's 2 times 1, 1 half, it's 1, so minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. Therefore, Vc0 plus is minus 3 volts. Okay. As for IL0 plus, we have IL0 minus plus 1 over L 
from 0 minus to 0 plus VL T dt. And that's what IL0 minus is given to be 4. And then 1 over L is 1 over 3. And then we integrate from 0 minus to 0 plus V vector voltage, which is 6 delta T dt. This produces 6 times 1 third is 2, plus 4 is 6. So, 6 amps is what the inductive current is at t equals 0 plus. Okay. And now, for the currents and voltages at t equals 0 plus, we can easily solve the following circuit. Because the positive time, the impulse becomes zero. Okay, a voltage, source, uh, a voltage source producing zero volts is equal to two short circuit. Therefore, we have short circuit for uh, that source. And then this is two ohms. This is three ohms. As for the inductor, its current at t equals zero plus is six amps. Therefore, this is a six amp current source for the Capacitor, we have a minus 3 volt source here, and as for this guy at 0 plus, the argument is positive, therefore, the step produces 1, a times 1 is 1. Therefore, this guy is an a temp current source. And then, this is an anti arrested circuit, we can find all the currents and voltages easily. Okay, so that takes care of. T0 minus and T equals 0 plus. And how about T equals infinity? Now the sources are constant for positive times. Therefore, the circuit, assuming that the circuit uh, will reach DC steady state, we can approach the problem from the following angle, okay, t equals infinity. The only remaining source in the circuit for t positive is This a and no, that, that step becomes a simple constant current source for positive times DC current source. Okay. And assuming the circuit reaches. DC steady state and by DC steady state we mean or a circuit that has reached DC steady state we mean a circuit where all the branch currents and voltages are constants okay. so at every voltage and current constant in this state as t goes to infinity we can proceed as follows okay. now the condition that every voltage 
and every current is constant, will immediately give us the following simplifications for the capacitor and inductor. And that follows from their terminal equations. Now, that current is proportional for an anti-capacitor to the rate of change of voltage. Okay. If the voltage is constant, therefore, rate of change of voltage is zero, and that means the current through the capacitor in a circuit that has reached DC state must be zero. Therefore, in other words, the capacitor can be replaced by open circuit uh, in a circuit that has reached DC state, and the dual component inductor can be replaced by short circuit at DC state. Okay, I C at infinity equals C D V C T D T evaluated at T equals infinity. At DC state state, everything is constant. Therefore, VCT must be constant. Its rate of change must be zero. Okay, so this is zero. C times zero gives us zero. Hence, the capacitor or any capacitor in a DC state state circuit behaves as open circuit. at DC state state. Okay. And then for the dual component, we can make the dual statement. BL infinity is L DIL DT evaluated at T equals infinity. At DC state, everything is constant, therefore this current is constant. You're taking the derivative of a constant signal, therefore this is zero. Hence, VL at T equals infinity is zero. Okay. Zero voltage means that that component is now behaving like a short circuit. Hence, the inductor behaves as With these simplifications, the circuit becomes easy to deal with. Okay? At t equals infinity, we solve the following circuit. Okay, we have the current source, 8 amps, and the impulsive source for all positive times is short circuit. And then here we have the inductor behaving as a short circuit. And the current passing through this wire is the uh, DC state current for the inductor. And as for the capacitor, it behaves as an open circuit. And this voltage appearing here is the DC state voltage for the capacitor. 2 ohms and 3 ohms. Okay. Here is our next example. the capacitor current in the following circuit. Here we have a battery, 10 volt source. Here we have a capacitor. The 
C, or C and H capacitors, two facts. Initially, those two components are isolated, because the switch is open, and then at T equals zero, the switch is closed, which forces two components to come parallel, or series, depending on how you look at it, and immediately carry out with put some constraints on voltages. The initial capacitor voltage is 4 volts. Okay. Now, there is nothing to compute really regarding the capacitor voltage. It's 4 volts initially. Okay. And as long as the switch is open, it will always remain at 4 volts because this is open circuit, the current is zero. Current zero means voltage is not changing. Okay. It will remain forever if nothing happens at 4 volts. But something does happen at t equals 0, and that's something is the switch being closed. When the switch is closed, this is 10 volt, and this is parallel to the capacitor wall. The capacitor becomes parallel to the uh, independent voltage source, and by KVL, therefore VC must automatically jump to 10 volts and will remain there for all future times. Hence, the waveform for the capacitor voltage will have this step like shape T sevens VCT volts. Okay. We're at four four negative times and then we jump to 10 and remain there at t equals 0. Okay. Pass voltage jumps from 4 to 10 at t equals 0. So this means we can write capacitor pass voltage easily in terms of one of our elementary functions. It's Okay, it's 4, and then at t equals 0, it experiences a jump, a positive jump of 6 units. And that we can express as 4 plus 6 times the unit step, 6 unit. Okay. And then, once you know the voltage, you can figure out the current using the turbulent equation. So let's do that. Hence, ICT equals C DVC DT, and that equals capacitance is 2 times D over DT, which I mean derivative of 4 plus 6 UT. Four is constant, therefore its derivative is zero, and the derivative of step is impulse. Therefore, we have six impulse coming out of this brackets, and that times two makes twelve impulse. Okay, twelve delta t m. So that's our capacitor count. Now, in the follow-up example, we have the following circuit, which can be reduced to what we have just dealt with. Certain series, there's a switch initially opened, and here we have the battery of 10 volts. Switch closes at t equals 
zero. This is three farads, six farads, B1, and this will produce by the S, V2. And B1 initial is three volts. V2 initial is one volt, and we ask for V2T. Four positive times, okay, four after the switch is shut. Now this is a cold two. The circuit that we considered in our previous example. Why is that? We have three farad and six farad in series, therefore the equivalent capacitance will be one over one over three plus one over six. Okay, so one over three plus one over six makes one over two. Then you take one over one over two, that gives you two farads. Okay. So here we have two F. Let's call this voltage AC, which is V1 plus V2, and let's call this current. I C, which is I1 and also I2 because the uh, capacitors are in series. And how about Vc0 minus in this representation? Vc0 minus must equal V1 0 minus plus Vt V2 0 minus. So we have 3 plus 1 equals 4. Okay. So we have that for including the initial condition exactly the same situation as we considered in the previous example. Therefore, the current passing through the capacitors here must be 12 by 13 amps. Okay, and once you know the current of a capacitor, you can easily compute the voltage because you know the initial condition. Therefore, V2 of T equals V2 initial V2 zero minus plus one over the capacitance, which is one over six, zero minus to T, and then you're integrating uh, the current I2 of uh, tau. And I2 and I1, they're equal, and they must equal to the current passing through this wire here, IC, hence we have IC tau D tau here. And that equals BC0 minus was 1 plus 1 over 6, and then 0 minus to T, 12 delta tau. Okay. This produces 12 times 1 over 6 is 2 plus 1, that makes 3. Okay. Therefore, V2T is 3 volts for all T positive. Okay. Now, in our last example, we're going to consider the bank of capacitors and resistors.
minus C1 V1 0 plus equals this integral and V2 C2 0 C2 V2 0 plus is the same integral hence C1 V1 0 plus must equal C2 V2 0 plus okay. and also 0 plus means this switch is shut therefore the KVL is now active okay. it puts constraints on our voltages that is V1 0 plus plus V2 0 plus must equal 10 volts okay. the voltage of the battery and combining these two equations yields V2 0 plus equals C1 over C1 plus C2 times 10 volts. Okay, so that takes care of the first part of the problem. Now let's concentrate on the DC set state, which is quite easy. Okay, DC. State. At DC state, capacitors behave like open circuits. Okay. So that means okay, here the old current will be flowing over R1, and here old current will be flowing over R2, and therefore we can simply figure out the voltages by voltage division. So V2 infinity therefore equals okay, this voltage appears uh, across the terms of the capacitor is R2 over the overall resistance seen by the voltage source which is R1 plus R2 times the voltage of the voltage source.